I'm Robert Bruce Thompson and this is the Home Scientist video series. In this segment we'll make pure ammonium metavanidate starting with only cheap pottery chemicals. Incidentally, vanadium salts are toxic and ammonium metavanidate is particularly so. Handle solutions and solids with care. Don't ingest them or allow them to contact your skin. Don't inhale the dust and dispose of waste properly. This is an excellent example of a money-saving synthesis. For example, Makershed sells 5 grams of ammonium metavanidate for 10 bucks. Elemental Scientific sells 25 grams for 45 bucks. We'll use a dollar or two's worth of pottery chemicals to make about 25 grams of ammonium metavanidate. We'll start with vanadium pentoxide, V2O5. This is an amphoteric compound, which means it can react as an acid or as a base, depending on what you react it with. We'll react it with sodium carbonate to produce sodium metavanidate, NaVO3, which is quite soluble in water. We'll then react the sodium metavanidate solution with an ammonium salt solution. We'll use ammonium chloride, but just about any ammonium salt will do as well, to produce the ammonium metavanidate. Because it's much less soluble than sodium metavanidate, the ammonium metavanidate precipitates out as pure crystals. We'll use our ammonium metavanidate in a later video to make mandolin reagent, a presumptive drug test reagent that produces characteristic color changes with various drugs, including over-the-counter drugs. Okay, let's get started. I've already dissolved about 20 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate in about 125 milliliters of water to produce the solution that we'll react our vanadium pentoxide with to produce the sodium metavanidate. Here's the uh, vanadium pentoxide. I got this from Seattle Pottery Supply and it looks remarkably pure. I've seen technical grade uh, vanadium pentoxide that is dark brown or almost black whereas this vanadium pentoxide sample looks very close to what I would expect a laboratory grade sample to look like. Uh, it's more a, a deep brownish yellow orange color. So what we're going to do is add this in very small increments initially to the hot sodium carbonate solution because it's going to outgas. Each mole of the vanadium pentoxide reacts with a mole of sodium carbonate to produce two moles of sodium metavanidate and one mole of carbon dioxide gas. As you can see, we're getting some outgassing of carbon dioxide and the solution is turning a very slight pale yellow color. So we'll add some more. As the vanadium pentoxide reacts with the sodium carbonate the color changes from an orangish yellow brown to a yellow greenish color and this is not reacting with extreme vigor so I'm going to add our vanadium pentoxide a bit faster. Okay apparently my value that I looked up for the solubility of sodium metavanidate was way low. Uh, that sludgy green stuff that was in the solution originally actually I think was undissolved sodium metavanidate. So what I've done is added some additional boiling water bit by bit until the uh, vast majority and perhaps all of the suspended solid green matter uh, has gone into solution. So now I'm going to filter. I've set up a larger filter with uh, a coffee filter and I'm going to filter this solution through And you can return the filtrate to the beaker and refilter through the same paper. Until the filtrate turns out clear. And finally we'll return it to the original beaker. And allow that to sit on the heat for a moment regain some of the heat it's lost. Okay, I have dissolved about 20 grams of ammonium chloride in about 75 milliliters of water. And now I'm going to take my hot solution of sodium metavanidate and just pour the ammonium chloride into the solution. 
Now at this point, the solution is still hot enough that the uh, ammonium metavanidate hasn't started to precipitate out yet. Ammonium metavanidate is a good deal more soluble in hot water than it is in cold water. So what we're going to do is just allow it to sit until it comes to room temperature and we should have a nice precipitate of pretty pure ammonium metavanidate crystals. Okay, I don't know if it's visible on the video or not, but uh, I've cooled the solution to room temperature and then placed it in a ice bath to cause even further precipitation. And it looks like we have a very nice crop of crystals here, many of them on the bottom of the beaker, more clinging to the sides. So I'm going to break up the accumulation of ammonium metavanidate crystals a little bit here and just pour the solution and solids through a prepared filter. And the crystals can be quite tenacious when they attach themselves to the glass surface. You can use a rubber policeman or just the end of a glass stirring rod to kind of scrape them loose so that you can suspend them in the solution. And if necessary, you can pour some of the filtrate back into the beaker and use it to rinse the crystals through the filter paper again. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have a quite a bit of accumulated ammonium metavanidate here loose, which I'm going to try to scrape into the filter. I'm going to add some of the filtrate back in and use it to rinse some of these crystals through the filter paper. And as you can see, the filtrate is actually now colorless, clear, looks like water. So we've captured nearly all of the crystals in the filter paper. And I'm going to continue scraping here. And you can repeat this as long as you have patience to rinse as many of the crystals as possible out of the beaker and through the filter paper. Okay, as you can probably see on the video, the uh, filtrate is water clear. It has a very slight yellowish tinge due to dissolved ammonium metavanidate, which is very slightly soluble at this temperature. But the vast majority of the ammonium metavanidate has crystallized out and we've captured it in the filter paper. So, let's take a look at what we have. Get it out of that red funnel so that we can get a better look at its appearance. Okay. Well, it's still wet and we'll dry it later, but you can probably see it is almost pure white. Uh, very, very slight tannish cast to it, which is indicative of high purity. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just compared it against a, a small bottle of reagent grade ammonium metavanidate that I purchased and the reagent grade stuff actually had a darker brown appearance than this does. We'll take a look at it once it's dried, but for now I think we can say that we've made a reasonable quantity of ammonium metavanidate of pretty high purity. Okay, with a couple of dollars worth of pottery chemicals and a little bit of work, we've just synthesized enough ammonium metavanidate to use in several future sessions on presumptive drug testing, oxidation states of vanadium, and so forth. One mistake I made was in assuming that the sodium metavanidate, the intermediate step, was much more soluble than it actually was. I started out with 125 milliliters of water to dissolve the 20 grams of sodium carbonate. What I should have started with was probably three times that much. If you do reproduce this experiment, I suggest that rather than 125 milliliters of water, you dissolve your 20 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate in about 350 to 400 milliliters of water. Please rate, subscribe, and comment.